and we're in line 51. The proud have me in great derision, yet I do not turn aside from your law. And so now he's talking about, he's talking about the proud, the defiant and the haughty. Um, have him in great derision. What is derision? Contempt manifested by laughter. And then what is contempt? Scorn compounded with disrespect. So you have, he has this disrespectful laughter. So he says that uh, the proud have me in great derision, yet I do not turn aside from your law. So it doesn't matter how haughty and how somebody try to uh, throw that scornful contempt against you, laughing at you. Uh, don't let that turn you. And he's saying, yet I do not turn aside from your law because people are going to ridicule you. People are going to make fun of you. Why? Because they're trying to get you off course. They're trying to get you out of the word of God. And it's not just them because we're really not wrestling uh, with flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness. All right. So that's really Satan and his, and his, uh, and his demons and Lord rebuke them for calling them in my house in the name of Jesus, trying to throw you off course because no matter how, the closer you get to God, the greater the uh the greater the fire the greater the battle the greater the fire the greater the battle and so um so he's saying that um <clears throat> so the proud have me in great derision yet i do not turn aside from your law 52 i remembered your judgments of old o lord and have comforted myself so I remember your judgments of old, O Lord, and have comforted myself. And that's what we have to do. We have to go back and remember those uh, that God of justice and and how He brought people out and and how He He maintained uh, that righteous judgment. And we're gonna go back and look at what He did then. Why? And that's how we're gonna bring us comfort. God didn't bring us this far to leave us now. And so if we're in a situation right now, we'll go back and see what he had done for you in the past and then see how he's going to bring you out in, um, in from your present situation. And that's going to bring us some comfort. 53. Indignation has taken hold of me because of the wicked who forsake your law. So what is that indignation? Is boiling wrath against something sinful. So now he's like boiling mad against something sinful because why? He said, um, because of the wicked who forsake your law. Well, that's what the wicked does. I mean, you got to be wicked if you're forsaking um, God's law. And not following what he has to do. And what he tells us to do. That's wickedness. And so you're not wicked if what? You're remaining inside following his word, his laws, his statutes, his precepts. And so that sends us to uh, Ezra 9.3. That says, so when I heard this thing, I tore my garment in my robe and plucked out some of the hair of my head and beard and sat down astonished all right and so why did he do that because israel was intermarrying with people that they shouldn't have been intermarrying with and so in ezra you know uh you know he cried about that and that you know that was disheartening to him and you're not going to uh, joy when somebody doing something and you know they shouldn't be doing it. <clears throat> All right. And, you know, Ezra, you know, he, he, he was a scribe. He, he wanted God to teach him the laws and everything. He wanted to live by God's statutes and laws. And he meant that he, wa he wanted to do that 
then he wanted everybody around him to do the same thing. He wanted Israel to do the same thing. But Israel, they started, and then they went right back to doing the same old thing. And that's what people do. I mean, you know, you can only teach people so far and so much. And if they don't want to do, they don't want to do. And, you know, I'm not going to pluck out my hair because nobody don't want to do what they want to do. You know what I'm saying? I, I, you know, I'm going to pray for them and stuff like that. But if they're not going to do, I'm not, you know, people know right from wrong. They know right from wrong. They know what God says and stuff like that. Uh, but they refuse to do what God says to do because why? That wickedness. And if people are wicked, they just wicked. And until God get a hold of them and then bring them back, all thing we could do is pray for them because why? We're not God. We're not Jesus, and we're not their Holy Spirit. People going to do what they want to do. You know, and you can only teach them and, and, and try to instruct them and stuff like that. Tell, tell them right from wrong. But, you know, nine times out of ten, and sometimes ten times out of ten, they love what they're doing. They love what they're doing. Until reality sets in, Something that's going to get their attention, going to wake them up, shake them up, <laughs> make them up. <laughs> because if they don't get it right, they won't be taken up. I'll see you in the next segment.